Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's Gardener's Corner program. I am Jennifer Brown, Family Consumer Science Agent with the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Service, and I work here in person in Granville counties. Our Lunch and Learn workshops this month have focused on fall prevention. It's a concern uh, a lot more for older adults as, as we get older. We become concerned about falling because it's harder to bounce back from certain injuries. And living where we live, sometimes there can often be slippery sidewalks or you know, inclement weather or different things like that. So we need to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves and that we're doing what we can to prevent falls. One of the reasons it's a concern is that it is also one of the leading causes of death in both Person and Granville counties in the top 10. It falls under the category of unintentional injury. I'm not sure what an intentional injury, uh, you know, characterized as, but the three unintentional injuries are falls, motor vehicles, and then unspecified. So it can be very difficult to um, take care of yourself as you, you get older sometimes. So we're going to provide tips of how to prevent falls and how to take care of yourself that, so that you don't have to bounce back from an injury. Part of the concern is that one third to about one half of older adults fear falling. It could be associated with a lot of different factors. It could be, um, you know, uh, depression. It could be a decreased mobility or social activity, which a lot of us have experienced over the past years. It could be coupled with increased frailty. It could be that, you know, someone suffering from osteoporosis or um, just as we, we age, we tend to lose muscle mass. So you might not have the strength that you used to have. So we want to make sure that you know what to do and understand that it's very common. In fact, every second an older adult falls. We just want to make sure you're not doing things that you shouldn't be doing because more than 95% of hip fractures are due to falls. And falls can be a leading cause of traumatic brain injuries as well. So it's not just breaking your hip or uh, something like that. Oftentimes people catch themselves or they try to, and they'll break a wrist or, or other things. And some people, when they're afraid of falling, they will actually kind of withdraw from society and they don't want to go out as uh, much because they fear, well, I don't want to slip and fall in the steps, or I don't want someone to see me fall or something like that. When in fact, one half to two thirds of the falls occur around your home. A majority of the falls occur doing routine activities. So you don't have to, to live in fear or feel you can't go out somewhere because actually you're more likely to fall at your home. Um, Falls aren't usually because of just one issue. It could be a combination of different factors, but a large portion of falls are preventable. Um, we, we always want to kind of deal with some of the misconceptions that people have about aging. There, to a certain extent, physical detriment is, is inevitable. And I don't mean that you can't you know, run a marathon or do something like that as you get older. You can still do these things, but you have to make sure that um, you're keeping up your, your muscle mass, you know, that you're making sure you're getting enough calcium, that you're keeping your bones strong, and that you are exercising. Even just a little bit of exercise can be extremely beneficial and help you prevent falls. Um, so don't assume that, um, you know, exercise will do no good or that it could cause you to hurt yourself, when in fact, it's more likely to help you. I know a gentleman who also had some like rotator cuff surgery he had to, to have, and he had been doing Tai Chi or other kind of yoga stretches and different things like that. His recovery time was much, much quicker than the normal, you know, average person because he had already strengthened up those, those muscles in his arms and his shoulders so that when he had to do some stretches and basic things to recover, it was a much quicker recovery. So uh, exercise is extremely important as we age. There are just like in anything we're talking about with chronic illnesses, there are certain risk factors that make you more at risk for a fall, certain things that you can't do anything about. As we get older, you know, our age, our sex, our race, our history of falls, these um, are going to increase your fall risk um, 
the more risk factors you have. So these are the non-modifiable risk factors. So let's focus on the things that you can change or you can fix. It could be your, your gait. You know, are you always in a hurry because you're always running late? And so you're always kind of walking really fast. Um, have you done any strength building? Have you done any balance exercises, even just to test how good your balance is or how poor it is? There are certain medications that can increase your risk uh, of falling. For example, metformin, which is a uh, medicine for people with diabetes or even pre-diabetes. It's not a reason to stop taking your metformin because it's extremely important to help with blood sugar, but just knowing that something like that could affect your risk of falling is important. Looking at your home and evaluating certain hazards that you might have around your home is extremely important. And um, during the Lunch and Learn in February, we've already done our in-person one, but we have the virtual one that is coming up next Tuesday, February 22nd at 12. Even if you can't attend the Zoom live, you can always register for it and we will send you the recording and all of the handouts. But during that workshop and some of the ones that we've taught in person, we're going to be going over a, um, a list of things to look for, hazards in your home. And in fact, if you are available, we're gonna be at the North Gramble Senior Center tomorrow in Stovall at 10 a.m. And we're gonna be presenting our fall prevention workshop to any individuals who wish to attend there. That workshop, as well as our virtual one next week, is both going to be free. Um, in addition to you know normal hazards you might have around your home, your vision could be slipping that can cause fall issues. If you have foot problems that can cause you know issues, or maybe you're just wearing bad shoes you know that don't quite fit you or maybe too loose or just something different about them. Um, your vision and your feet issues are also important and also a side effect or could be um, affected by diabetes too. So if you are diabetic, you definitely have several different factors that could increase your risk of falling. Vitamin D deficiency. This uh, is extremely important. As we get older, a lot of us, you know, we get our vitamin D from the, the sunlight, but our body, as we age, you're not able to convert and utilize that vitamin D in the way that you need to. So you can become deficient in it. So having your doctors run, you know, some simple tests to make sure, you know, how your, your you know, vision is, how your uh, vitamin D levels is, um, and as well as if you have low blood pressure. It's called orthostatic hypotension. We've all experienced it probably where you stand up too quickly and then you feel a little dizzy right there. That is a, um, basically you have your, your, your low blood pressure right then and it can cause problems. You could have a variety of other comorbidities or issues that can cause issues. I mentioned, you know, diabetes, osteoporosis, depression, dementia, different things like this are going to increase your risk. And the more of these risk factors you have, the more likely you are to have issues with falling. So what can we do? Well, oftentimes it can be a self-fulfilling prophecy. The fear of falling can actually cause people to fall. So we don't want you to be fearful. If you do have a visual impairment or you know eye problems, maybe getting some of those simple um, little glasses you can get from the dollar store that you can keep around your, your home so that you um, aren't always looking for your glasses or having to get up and go find where you left your glasses. You've got kind of a, a, an extra spare set that can at least get you through. It may not be a prescription level glasses, but something that can at least help you um, if you're trying to read or different things like that. Having conversations with your doctor or your pharmacist as well about certain medications you're taking, such as antidepressants, diuretics, or your diabetes medications are some of the three top ones that can make you more at risk for falling or causing dizziness or different things like this. Keeping up your, your strength building, keeping up your exercise so that you don't have poor endurance, you don't have limited balance there, and poor planning can also and cause problems with falling. Again, you're always running around because you're always late or you forgot something or just whatever else and you get in a rush and you're more likely to, to fall. So what can we do about the fall hazards? Well, there's 
three typical steps that you can do. The first line of defense is eliminate the hazard. Can you can you get rid of it? Is your home, you know, kind of like a ticking time bomb where it's so many different things on the floor or so many different pieces of furniture that you're always walking through a maze basically because you're more likely to fall through that. The second line of defense is preventing the fall. And that could be, I need to do my exercises. So I'm staying strong and controlling the fall. Sometimes we're gonna fall. And you know there are certain ways that are you know falling or better than, than others. So we'll talk about those in, in our workshops. It's always good if you're trying to eliminate the hazard is if you don't have to um, you know, get up high, work from the ground. You know, don't use a ladder if you don't need to, or don't try to climb on something you shouldn't be doing anyway. Um, use a step ladder, of course, definitely when needed. Cover any holes or do any repairs or have someone else come in and do any repairs uh, around your home. Uh, walking outside, walking on even ground, going to one of the parks where they have tracks that you can walk on or going even into a store and just walking around kind of laps there and never hesitate for asking for help. It's okay to ask for help if you need some help with uh, a hazard. Your home hazard is again, the, the main concern because most of the, the falls, you know, at least half of them occur in your home. So clutter on the floor. Do you, do you have a lot of stuff on your floor? Are you wearing proper shoes? Are you wearing proper socks? It's okay if you're like me, I've almost fallen a dozen times because of my dogs. It's okay to have dogs, especially even, you know, some people are concerned about the little ones, but you just need to be more cognizant of where they are, okay? Always look and see if there's someone is behind you before you take a step. I have to teach my kids this too. When you're trying to get up out of a chair, it could be that you need to make sure you have different types of furniture at your house. I've got the chairs here in my office that have armrests, um, at, uh, but at my dining table, I don't. Maybe that's something you need to do is next time you purchase chairs is make sure you have armrests that you can push up on. Maybe you need to get someone to help you install railings in your, your, your bathroom, whether it's to get up off the toilet or to get, uh, you know, hold on into the shower, different things like that. Uh, practice safe lifting. Oftentimes we go down and to, to lift a box and we're leaning forward and it just, our momentum carries us forward and we could get hurt. Um, widen your stance so you're not like walking small, little fast, little steps. So take slow steps and walk further and um, wider uh, steps is what you're going to do. So you're less likely to, to catch your foot there and, and slip. And just go through, if you're able to attend either our in-person workshop or at, that will be at the North Granville Senior Center at, in Stovall tomorrow at 10 a.m., or if you're able to attend our virtual workshop, that'll be next Tuesday, February 22nd at noon, we will provide a handout, kind of a checklist of, you know, going through your different rooms. Is this here? Is this there? You know, so you can see if you need to, um, things you could simply do. So recognizing your hazards and fixing them. It could be, it's not that you have the wrong furniture. Maybe you just need to rearrange it so you have more open spaces. Maybe there's certain light bulbs you need to replace, or maybe again, the, the handrails you need to install. Make sure that you have extra night lights for when you're getting up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. I don't care if you put night lights all the way down the hall, just making sure, especially if you have vision issues, that you can see where you're walking and you can see um, very easily. Doing your strength and balance exercises is extremely important too. We'll get to that in a minute. When you're trying to control your fall, again, we can't stop ourselves from falling always. It's good if you, you they actually say lean forward into the fall, fall sideways, try to twist your shoulder so you can protect your, your head there. So you're not, you know, I'd rather fall on my shoulder than, than hit my head. We again, don't want any traumatic brain injuries. And if possible, relax everything. We often um, hear, unfortunately, we hear about car accidents and we hear about individuals that uh, might have some alcohol in their in their system and they survive a car accident with little to no injury. And part of that 
is because they're they're extremely re relaxed. Now, I'm not saying you know that you need to be drinking or anything like that because that's more likely to increase your levels of of falls. But trying to to remember that that's why you need to just relax everything and and go into the the fall because if you tense up and you're trying to catch yourself, that's when you'll break a wrist or break an arm or a shoulder or a hip. Is your body is so tense there that it's just easier for a break. So. Um, thinking just remember relax and just go limp and and fall with it um because more than likely you're not going to be able to catch yourself uh so just trying to remember that relax and just go with the go with the flow there if you're able to practice some um some strength exercises or even balance tests. One of the simple balance tests they recommend is just sitting in a chair. You can either cross your arms over your uh, chest or you can have your arms all the way up and you wanna be able to stand up and sit back down, okay? Without having to push off, without having to have you know any use of your, your hands there. You should be able to, to do that and to even do it like five or so times. The longer amount of time that it takes you to be able to stand up and sit down without having that, then you're more likely, you're more at risk for falling because your, your balance is, is a little bit off or maybe you just don't have the strength in your legs to be able to stand up without using your arms to, to help get you up. It's something that you can work on and continue to try to do that. So you should be able to uh, go from sitting to standing in um, at least like 15 seconds. You should be able to, to do that even, even several times, like five times or, or so. So practicing that, making sure that if you're doing that, you don't have a chair that has wheels, that you are, um, you know, you, you've got something in front of you. So if you do need to catch yourself or hold on to something, you know, if you start to feel a little wobbly, then you're able to do that. So hopefully you can in, uh, join us for our fall prevention workshop that we've got coming up. Um, and we look forward to seeing you. If you ever wanna know what when our workshops are gonna be, you can always check us out online at Person at Granville FCS. We're on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, we are gonna take a quick break for a minute to get a word on from our sponsors. Jason Acock, Auctioneering, VAL 004616, announces the Farm Equipment Auction for the Estate of the Deceased Lynn Vaughn to be held Saturday, February the 26th at 10 a.m. at 3886 Bethel Church Road in Green Bay, Virginia. The auction will be held at rain or shine, on-site bidding, and bidding available through proxy bid. For terms, more information, and to see photographs of items up for auction, Log on to jasonacockauctioneering.com. You can also call Jason Acock at 919-495-0285. Up for auction on Saturday, February the 26th at 10 a.m. Tractors, trucks, trailers, tillage, planting, and hay equipment, plus shop tools and salvage vehicles. That's jasonacockauctioneering.com or call Jason at 919-495-0285. This auction will be held Saturday, February the 26th at 10 a.m. at 3886 Bethel Church Road, Green Bay, Virginia. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Gardener's Corner. I'm Jennifer Brown, Family Consumer Science Agent with the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Service. And February is American Heart Month. So we want to encourage you to make sure that you're eating your healthy fruits and vegetables, such as this lovely uh, strawberry that's right here in my, my glass, as well as that you're staying hydrated. You're drinking water and substituting water instead of a lot of sugary sweetened beverages. When I do workshops with kids, they often tell me, that the, the strawberry looks like a little heart. So they always wanna eat a lot of strawberries because they know it's good for their heart and it's good for their, their health. 
we want to share information from the American Heart Association with you that um, can help you eat healthy for your heart. So I have put together some of their little info graphics or fact sheets that they have on the American Heart Association website at heart.org to give you a little bit of information about some things that are good for your heart. So let's get started. Um, we want to make sure that it's important for you to understand why it's important to eat a well-balanced diet. We talked uh, in our first part of our Gardener's Corner program today about fall prevention. And we mentioned that it's uh, part of one of the top 10 uh, leading causes of death. Well, the number one cause of death in person in Granville counties is often heart disease. Um, they'll put all the different cancers to, together. So sometimes cancer in general is, is number one, but heart disease is usually in the top three leading causes of death. Um, in fact, it kills one out of every three women. And there's some things that you can do, just like the fall prevention, there's certain risk factors that make you more at risk for heart disease. So we wanna make sure that you're maintaining a healthy weight. That includes your, um, it'll help you maintain your cholesterol levels, your blood pressure levels, your blood glucose levels, and that you're being physically active because physical inactivity can increase your risk for heart disease as well as smoking or using other tobacco products. So let's try to, um, you know, prevent heart disease and stroke. The American Heart Association has this fact sheet that has eight steps to prevent heart disease and stroke. Number one is just knowing your risk. Um, we, we mentioned that there are certain risk factors that make you more at risk for heart disease. They actually have a calculator. It's called a check change control calculator. And it's got the website right there, but you can even just Google it. Um, and find it on the American Heart Association website. And it will help you estimate the chance of you having some kind of cardiovascular event within the next 10 years. So that's knowing your risk. Number one after that is going to be eating a healthy diet. You want to center your entire you know, healthy eating lifestyle around the, the my plate. So it's gonna focus on half of your plate being fruits and vegetables, making sure the grains are whole grains. You can have protein. It recommends beans, legumes, nuts, or other plant-based protein. You can have uh, other you know, meat types of proteins. That's perfectly fine. There are some that are healthier than others or some that have heart healthy fats versus the unhealthy uh, saturated fats. But watching your portion size is important too. After eating healthy, we want to stress the importance of physical activity. So adults are supposed to get 150 minutes of moderate level activity per week. So that's five days of 30 minutes of physical activity. By doing these two, the eating healthy diet and being physically active, you will be able to better control or manage your weight. You can check your BMI or your body mass index by using one of the online calculators and even just talking to your doctor about how to uh, decrease your BMI they, and they can give you tips as well. Living tobacco free. If you need information about quitting tobacco, you can contact the health department. And I know here in Person County, they have resources from the NC quit line to help you um, manage your tobacco products and hopefully get to where you can quit smoking or using any type of tobacco at all. And then thinking about all of your other conditions. Most people with heart disease don't just have heart disease. They have other chronic conditions such as diabetes or um, the, all of the other stuff that actually goes with heart disease, hypertension, high blood pressure, cholesterol, or other issues that can put you more at risk. If your doctor prescribes medication for blood pressure or cholesterol, any of that, we uh, stress the importance of listening to your, your doctor, taking all the medications as directed, having that relationship with your doctor as well as your pharmacist so you can feel comfortable enough to ask questions because it's a team, your doctor and you and any of the support you know system that you have set in place and your pharmacist is there to help you be the healthier you. Cholesterol is always a concern for people. Um, it's hard to sometimes understand cholesterol a little bit, but basically it's a fat light substance. 
It comes from our food and our body also creates it as well. In the food, it's from our animal sources only. So if you have high cholesterol, reducing the animal-based proteins is something that can help you with that a little bit, eating more plant-based proteins. Um, remembering you can get protein as well from your, your eggs and, and your nuts and peanut butter and those kinds of sources or black beans, legumes, seeds, those kinds of things. But your cholesterol is traveling around in your body in what's called lipoproteins. So we have the LDL, which we kind of uh, tell people to remember, you know, which one's good or which one bad is the HDL is our happy uh, cholesterol. It's, you know, it's the good one. And then your LDL is the lousy one. It's the bad one that you want to decrease. Um, and then just understanding how, how to do that, tracking these levels, keeping track. If your cholesterol is typically high, what is your normal range? And then focusing on some of the other steps that we've already mentioned to you to help decrease your cholesterol eating healthier, moving more, knowing are you using the bad saturated fats or are you using more of the heart healthy unsaturated fats? Switching from butter to olive oil is a simple way to swap the fats, to change a bad fat into a good fat. We mentioned the importance of not smoking and taking your medication as directed. So if you have heart disease, cholesterol issues, blood pressure issues, a lot of the steps and ways that you can solve them are the same, no matter what they are. Um, so you can see, we're just kind of repeating the, the things here. Being active is extremely important as well as eating better. Um, a lot of times people will focus on one of these. And it's kind of like one of those little scales, the little pendulum scales that you have to have them both in a good range in order for you and your entire health and body to be in a good range. So if you are eating really, really good, but you're not exercising as at, you know, at all, then your pendulum is still going to be off balance. Um, just like if you are exercising really well and you're not eating very well, then it's going to swing the other way. We want them both to be at the optimum level so that you can lose weight. You can control your cholesterol, manage your blood pressure, as well as your blood sugar. There are a variety of different ways to eat healthy. If you need more specific information, meal suggestions, recipes, if you want a, uh, a healthier way of eating, we can give you information about the, either the, the DASH diet or the Mediterranean diet. These are two, um, we use the word diets, but it's technically two healthier ways of eating that are kind of a long-term lifestyle eating plan. So it's not like most other diets, that's the short term, you're going to do this until you get to the level you want to be, and then you're going to go off that diet. This is a new way of eating. In fact, we call it the med way, the Mediterranean way of, of eating, but we have information on both of those two types of ways of eating. And those are the two that are recommended by uh, most cardiologists. But overall, it's to eat more color in your diet, more fresh fruits, veggies. It can be canned, we can be frozen, but just eating more fruits and veggies. I'm not concerned about whether it's organic or if it's conventional, canned, fresh, frozen, any of that, just eat more fruits and vegetables. That's the important part right now. When you get to that level, then if you have questions about the other stuff, we can talk more about that. Your whole grains is important. A lot of us are eating the amount of grains that we're supposed to have. You know, in fact, we might be getting a little bit more, but you're supposed to get about six ounces of grains per day. Um, we are getting that, but we're supposed to have half of that, three ounces of it, be whole grains. We are not anywhere near that. We are at half of an ounce, half of one ounce of whole grains out of the six or seven ounces that we're getting a day. Dairy and your protein, we want to get those lean, as, as lean as we can. So low fat, fat free, or the, the leanest cuts of meat, watch your portion sizes as well. And then cooking with the healthy oils. So you're cooking with the, uh, you know, olive oil, the canola oil, those are the kind of the, the best ones that are good for our heart health because they have the poly and monounsaturated fats that we want to, um, to, to eat instead of the, the solid fats. So if you can limit your three bad things, the fat, the sugar, and the salt. So trying to um, avoid or limit those things is, is definitely going to be a concern for our health. 
So people ask me, you know, I want to, I want to eat cleaner. I want to feel better. I always feel kind of lethargic or just full of stuff. Well, if you, all you're eating is fast food or you're eating a lot of grease and you're eating a lot of, you know, what could be considered unhealthy things, then you're going to feel kind of, you know, worn down and lethargic and just, you know, icky because you've got so much processed stuff in your system. So you can, again, eat more of this right here, your vegetables, your fruits, and your whole grains there, okay? Um, just getting the color in the things is, is we, what we want. We don't want just meat, bread, and potatoes kind of kind of meal. Half of your plate should be full of colorful, fresh fruits and veggies. It's trying to steer clear of what we know are some of the starchy veggies, like our potatoes and our corn. Um, even lima beans, even though they've got color to it, they are a starchy vegetable and trying to get more of our um, unstarchy ones. If you need help or handout to kind of determine which one's starchy or unstarchy, we have that information at the extension office and we'd be more than happy to share that with you. And then not forgetting the healthy stuff. So um, proteins is always kind of the place that trips most people up, especially the, the men. A lot of men, you know, I've got to have meat at every meal and that's perfectly fine. There are certain healthier cuts of meat. We recommend eating more seafood or, you know, fish uh, in your diet. If you're eating poultry, the healthier cuts of meat is the white cuts of meat, the breast and the wing are the two white cuts of meat. Or also just taking that skin off the, the meat can save you a lot of calories. How you cook that meat is extremely important. Can you, you know, grill it? Can you, you know, bake it in the oven? Uh, those are healthier ways as opposed to deep fat frying um, or cooking it in a lot of butter or grease or different things like that. Um, but you can get protein, as I mentioned, from beans and legumes and nuts and seeds as well as you're going to get protein from uh, some of your other dairy products. There are plenty of fruits and, and or veggies that can give you protein as well. So you're getting a lot of vitamins and a lot of different minerals from your fruits and veggies. So making sure you've got those in your, your diet, you're watching out or limiting the fat, sugar, and salt. And, um, and that includes your, your processed meats. They are very high in, in fat. So just choosing a different type of meat is often healthier. And there are so many different reasons to add color. Not only do we want the fresh fruits and vegetables because of all of the nutrients that it gives us, but it has so many other beneficial things to it. So it's going to give you that nutrient powerful boost. It's going to give you less of the bad stuff. They don't have typically the trans fats or the saturated fats or the salt in there, um, unless you're getting it a canned product and you can still get reduced sodium or no salt added. Also, they're extremely low in calories. Unless we're adding a lot of extra seasonings or like extra um, sauces or those kinds of things, you know, if we're frying something or whatever else, they can make you feel full because they've got a good amount of fiber, they've got a good amount of water, and those two things are going to help you feel full so you're less likely to eat as much. Also, there are so many different fruits and vegetables that we call them uh, superfoods. So you can have these things, they are delicious to eat, and they're not gonna give you all these extra bad things in your system that you don't need. They're also going to be good for your immune system. You're less likely to be at risk for serious and chronic health conditions like heart disease, as I mentioned, but they're good for your overall health. So you're not deficient in some key nutrients that can cause other issues, such as earlier, we talked about fall prevention. Falls can be caused by a uh, deficiency in vitamin D. So making sure you're getting your nutrients from your food is extremely important. There are so many different wonderful resources on the USDA website, on the heart.org, the American Heart Association website. People often will ask me, like, I'm looking for foods that are very high in, say, potassium or very high in uh, vitamin A or vitamin C or something like that, that maybe their doctor told them they need more of. We have information that can give you uh, specifics about, well, these are good things for this, but you can just see all of the bright colors that are on this page right here. And it shows you all of those 
nutrients in the, the right column there that tell you what you're getting from these foods. And you can do this whether you're at work, whether you're at home or, or whatever else. You can build healthy lunch habits at home. A lot of us eat lunch at work. We might have an on-site cafeteria or some food service, or we go to these lovely vending machines. Unfortunately, a lot of us, more than half of us, struggle to eat healthy at work. And it doesn't help if you had a very stressful day. Then you feel like you need to reward yourself by going out to eat for, for lunch. Um, we want you to understand that you can prepare a simple lunch at home. And that will, you know, save you a lot of calories, a lot of headache as well. And um, we're, we're hoping that if you need some suggestions for meal planning or figuring out how to do that at your work, that again, you'll contact the extension office. You can also check us out on Facebook and Instagram um, and even YouTube at with our handle at person Granville FCS. So we're going to take a quick break for, to hear from another one of our sponsors. Sandling Golf Cars and Trailers is located 613 Lewis Street in Oxford. Open for business weekdays 8 to 5, Saturdays 9 to 1. Call 1-800-221-9267 or 919-693-4626. Al, Hillary, and Will, there to serve you with all of your golf car needs. They have club car, easy go, and Yamaha units. If you're wanting a gasoline or an electric golf car, they have them at Sandling Golf Cars and Trailers. Trojan batteries, parts, and repair service. Thinking about a new grill? Check out the Wilmington Grills at Sandling Golf Cars and Trailers. Speaking of trailers, they have utility, dump, enclosed, stock, and equipment trailers. That's Sandling Golf Cars and Trailers in Oxford, 919-693-4626, toll free, 1-800-221-9267. Sandling Golf Cars and Trailers. Even though the calendar says it is February, we all know that spring 2022 is not far behind. There is plenty of time now to come to T.G. Brooks Company and get some sound advice for your lawn preparation coming up soon. They have had so much experience, so why not let the professionals work with you on your spring lawn and garden planning? They serve homeowners all over person and surrounding counties. They will tell you all about the advantages of pre-emergent weed control or weed and feed. You want to be sure to perk up your lawn with fertilizer, lime, and weed control to get your lawn off to a proper spring start this year. To beautify your flower garden and shrubs around your home, T.G. Brooks Company carries hardwood as well as dyed mulches, and they will deliver to your home or office, and they'll also sell it by the scoop or by the bag. They feature all of the popular lawn and garden chemicals and treatments, insecticides, herbicides, and always carry the soils like topsoil, bulk planting soil, potting soil, cow manure, and pine needles to make your place look sharp. They have equipment for sale or rent like spreaders, power pluggers, and lots of lawn and garden tools, and of course wheelbarrows. And before you know it, it will be March. They'll have all of your flower garden and vegetables and garden supplies. When it comes to beautification, come in today and talk over your plans. Let them remind you that T.G. Brooks Company has your water heater elements, thermostats, and pressure relief valves. They have Taylor wood stove parts. Person, county, and surrounding areas count on T.G. Brooks Company, serving the homeowner, farmer, and construction worker since 1936. Phone anytime at 364 24 Two, eight. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Gardener's Corner program. My name is Jennifer Brown and I'm the Family and Consumer Science Extension Agent for Person and Grandel Counties. Um, 
one of the things that I also want to talk to you about is the importance of our volunteers. I want to first thank each and every single one of our volunteers that volunteers with the extension office, whether it's with the 4-H program, uh, teaching a workshop or being a 4-H club leader. If it's the extension master gardeners, helping provide that knowledge and volunteerism out into the community with different projects as well as uh, some of our other associations, the, the Cattlemen's Association. And one of the ones that I work with is the Extension Master Food Volunteers. It is a program that these individuals had to receive 30 hours of training in order to then be allowed to go and help me lead, teach, uh, manage programs out in the community. These individuals help set up booths at different community festivals, providing education, maybe even providing some some taste tests or just information out into the community. And it helps reach out our, you know, extends our reach out into the community that much more. We also have the Extension Community Association here in Person County. It's called the Extension Volunteer Association in Granville County, but it's basically the same thing. We have about three to four different clubs in both Person and Granville counties each. And these clubs get together and uh, they do a variety of community service. They also do leadership and just give back to the community, uh, providing scholarships to the community. Some of them uh, put together backpacks for the Appalachian Backpack Outreach Program around Christmas time. We have donated dictionaries to some of the third graders in, in Granville County. We have um, done a pinto bean fundraiser here in Person County to help raise money to make donations out to our um, you know, other 501c3 nonprofits in the community, such as the Needle Workers, the Roxboro Police Athletic uh, Association League. We have tried to help out a vari wide variety of different agencies in, in the communities, but these individuals come together and this program not only benefits the community, but it benefits them as individuals as well. They come together in the clubs and they learn different life skills. They learn about uh, teamwork. They learn about leadership, being an officer uh, in their club program, in the county program. We also have a district and state extension community association. So these individuals could go and be um, a leader in the district or even state association. In fact, our uh, district president right now is from Person County and we have helped organize and lead our extension uh, community association district day last year, as well as this year coming up in the spring. So we're always giving back to the community and we're always trying to grow as individuals. At the district level, several of the agents across the district have been offering workshops once a month. It's on the first Thursday of the month at 11. And uh, the topics, you know, range from uh, in January, it was disaster preparedness. In February, they taught um, making bread in a bag. When, um, March, we have decluttering your mind and space. And um, we have workshops every first Thursday of the month throughout the rest of the year. These workshops are geared towards our Extension Community Association volunteers, but they are open up to the entire community, whether you're interested in becoming a volunteer in the future or not. Again, we have about three to four clubs in each of the counties. We're always looking to recruit new volunteers. So if you're interested in either being a food volunteer, specifically helping with our you know, food programs, or if you're just interested in being a you know, general community volunteer, we have clubs that you can participate in. Each monthly meeting, the clubs will do kind of a leader lesson. They have one person in the club that's in charge of providing a program, an educational program. It could be about food or mindfulness. It could be about decluttering your, you know, your home. It could be about you know, hydration or uh, fall prevention, whatever the topics are, the volunteers themselves get to choose what they want to learn about. Prior to COVID, we would do, you know, field trips or other uh, fundraising for the, to raise money for the program so that we could 
make donations. One of the donations that we made in Person County a couple of years ago was to help fund the bookmobile that the Person County Library was able to purchase. We were one of the uh, sponsors making a donation for that. In Granville County, we again give dictionaries out to the third graders every year, as well as we help with the Backpack Buddies program that is coordinated through the local food pantry in Granville County. So if you're interested in being a volunteer, if any of this sounds like fun to you, if you just want to meet some new people, if you are interested in giving back, the Extension Office would be more than happy to utilize your services. And a lot of our volunteers volunteer elsewhere. Some of them have been in volunteers in the schools, maybe reading to, to kids or helping um, some have uh, volunteered at the Person County Senior Center. Some just volunteer in their local church giving back. But wherever they are, they are representing the Cooperative Extension Service. And I would not be able to do what I do without our volunteers. So again, I just want to say thank you to, to all of them, no matter which program you volunteer with, if you're at the Extension Service or if you were just a volunteer with another organization, in the community. I can tell you on behalf of that organization that we are truly indebted to each and every one of our volunteers and we cannot say thank you enough. If you're interested in learning more about the Extension Master Food Volunteers or the Extension Community Association in either person or Granville County, I will be at the local community garden event in Cornwall this Saturday. So I'm going to show that flyer real quick so you can see when that event is going to be. The uh, community of Cornwall put together a community garden this past summer. It was the first time they, they were able to, to plant some um, seeds and grow some, some vegetables. The Extension Office helped with this initiative by providing information from our horticulture agent to make sure that the, the soil was, you know, uh, tested as well as, you know, which um, plants would work good in that soil and just kind of answered a lot of different questions. The Family Consumer Science Program was able to provide some funding from our North Carolina Steps to Health grant program so that they were able to purchase some gardening equipment, you know, wheelbarrows, shovels, those kinds of things. And we have recently gotten a new batch of grant funding to help them purchase a storage shed and some other um, materials around the garden, as well as more plants and seeds to help them further their gardening initiative as we move forward into this year. And in order to celebrate that and get the kind of a kickstart to this year's event, they are hosting a garden day on uh, this Saturday, February 19th at 9 a.m. I will be there uh, with a booth as well as providing some, some information about healthy eating. We're going to have some fun activities, maybe a little physical activity, but we're also going to have some taste tests. Um, I know one of them is going to be a, a smoothie. We're going to have recipe cards and a lot of information, as well as there are going to be some door prizes. This event is uh, sponsored by the Cooperative Extension Service, the Granville Vance Public Health, as well as the uh, Well Care Organization. If you're interested in learning more about the, our extension volunteers, I will be there on hand. Maybe I'll even have a, a food volunteer or two there with me to help join in this event. And this event again will be on Saturday, February 19th at 9 a.m. at the New Grassy Creek Baptist Church on Cornwall Road in Oxford. We look forward to hopefully seeing you there. After the event, um, at the at the church, we're going to be in the fellowship hall. They are planning to, if the weather permits, to go to the garden afterwards and maybe start even, uh, you know, checking out the soil, tilling it a little bit, um, you know, and just getting it ready to start planting soon. So if you want to help out with that, you uh, the phone number there is on the flyer, so you can always give them a call to uh, get more information about how you can volunteer at this event. We hopefully look forward to, to seeing you at that event, but if not, you can always check out what the person in Granville Extension Office are doing, and even our Family Consumer Science Program. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and our handle is at Person Granville FCS. It's our Food for Thought page. 
Thank you for joining us for our Gardener's Corner program. And we are going to uh, end our program this week with a word from another one of our sponsors. Thanks for tuning in this week.